Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Your Money, Your Call. I'm Nina May, here to give you their take on today's market action and, of course, take your calls live on air. Uh, Roger Montgomery from rogermontgomery.com and Les Chancer from Kinetic Securities. So, if you have a question for my expert panel, then now's the time to dial in. There's a number at the bottom of your screen, 1300 30 34 35. And, of course, we do look forward to chatting with you throughout the program. Well, look, Roger and Les, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us on Your Money, Your Call tonight. Appreciate Thank you. it. It's a pleasure, Nina. Well, there's a lot of talk of, you know, a Christmas rally, but uh, when I think I've, we've talked about this the last time I was on your program, that the, 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 the intrinsic value of the All Ordinaries Index, aggregating the values of all the companies, is about it's about 4,000 or thereabouts, you know, a little bit less. Um, so the fact that the market's got ahead of that, um, well, you'd expect some sort of consolidation. Now, two things could happen. Either the share, pri the share prices could drop back to the value or even below if it overreacts, or it just consolidates while it waits for value to catch up. Um, on an individual company basis, there are more companies that are overvalued or overpriced mm -hmm. compared to their values than there are under. Yes, you've said this has been a common theme, hasn't it, with mm. you, that, that really the bargains out there are kind of few and far between now. Yeah, they disappeared uh, June, July. They, you know, there, there were a lot fewer after that, um, except for obviously the, the couple that I have spoken about with you before. Um, uh, JB Hi-Fi, for example, has, has been a perennial favourite of mine, as you know, because its value is significantly higher than its price. But for many other companies that we're seeing in, in the market at the moment, they've factored in, even the banks, their prices today are what I am valuing them at in two years' time. So they're above their values this year, their values are going up over the next couple of years, but the price today is what they're worth in two years. So you're going to have to wait, if you're buying today, you're going to have to wait 24 months for the value to catch up. Okay, okay well, gentlemen, let's go to our first um, caller. We've got Ryan, who's dialed in from Perth. Hi, Ryan, great to have your company tonight. Hey, Nina, uh, thanks very much for taking my call. Um, I just got a quick question um, about Apex Minerals. That's AXM. Okay, AXM is a stock code, so we'll get it up on the screen. Apex Minerals. What are your thoughts? I know nothing about this particular company. In fact, I'm hoping people who are listening and watching the program um, might have some, some companies that make a profit that they want to <laughs> ring up about. We'll soon see. Let's go to Don from Sherwood, see what our company he wants to ask about. Hi, Don. Uh, hi, how are you? Very well. Yeah, yeah, uh, 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 I'd like to ask uh, Roger Montgomery this question. Yeah, I'm a shareholder of NAB. Yep. Uh, do you feel I should hold on to it? Because I'm informed that uh, NAB will have to sell MLC, and MLC will in turn have to sell its financial planning business and their wealth management arm as a conflict of interest now exists. Well, what I, that's a great question. Um, what I do is I look at businesses as a going concern and I say, well, assuming they're going to continue in the business that they're in uh, and they retain a certain, de a certain amount of profits because obviously they pay some amount of dividends, what they leave, they, they uh, generate the return on equity that they've been generating recently uh, and, and that grows their equity. What I'm interested in is the, the multiple of that equity to pay based on its profitability. Now, the best bank by far in terms of profitability is the CBA. The, the worst or the lowest is the National Australia Bank. So in terms of economic performance, CBA is vastly better than the NAB. But here's the dilemma. The NAB arguably is still cheap compared to its value, whereas the CBA is probably about its value. It's a tough one to answer. I don't own the NAB, I own the CBA. Um, if I owned NAB, um, I'd probably simply switch to CBA if I wanted to remain in the banking space. Um, I don't know, no, nothing that I say is a prediction about the share price, but I can tell you that uh, the NAB is cheap, but it's not a great quality bank compared to uh, Westpac and the CBA, and CBA is a first-class bank. Uh, I've, got, I've, got the current, I've got the 2007 valuation for the NAB of $32, so I'm going to correct what I said earlier. Mm -hmm. um, 2007 was $32. 2009, I've got actually $20. Gosh, valuation it's $28. On a, and it's $28, mm. yeah. So um, I had in mind that it was it was actually the cheapest. In fact, it's not. And 2010, I've got uh, $20.21. $20 so it's actually expensive. And so forgive me for, for getting those numbers wrong earlier. Um, the NAB, I'll make it very clear, the NAB, according to my numbers, is actually expensive compared to its valuation, whereas CBA is at about its valuation two years out. Gina from Sydney, are you there, Gina? Yes, I am. Hi, good evening to you. I just wanted to inquire from the, the panel. I have a f um, almost 450 um, 
Pacific Brands uh, shares, and they are obviously not going anywhere. Do you think it will be a wise thing to go from Pacific Brand to Suncorp, which I already hold? And yeah, that is my question. What, what do you think about Pacific Brand? Well, let's start by taking a look at both the charts for Pacific Brands and also for Suncorp. So, okay, there we go. Pacific Brands looks like it's about a dollar thirty-five, and Suncorp. Hopefully, we'll be able to bring that up for you now, so we can take a bit of a look. Oh, just waiting for the Suncorp chart. It'll come up in a second. But, Roger, first of all, the, the strategy of going from Pacific Brands to Suncorp, talk to me about it. What do you think? I don't like either company. Um, uh, Pacific Brands is, is a business that is, is way over its valuation, um, and, uh, and I, it's just not, a, an, it's not the quality end of the business spectrum for me. That's not to cast uh, any doubt on the ability of the people managing the business. Um, I think they'll do a, as best a job as they're able to do. Uh, but having said that, uh, you know, if you've got a boat with a perpetual leak, then it doesn't matter who's rowing it. Um, yeah. You know, it's going to sink. And I'm, you know, taking on your uh, thing. your analogy. You, we might just keep that as a theme <laughs> for the <laughs> evening. Um, uh, so, so in answer to the question, um, would you switch into SunCorp? Well. I don't know, but I wouldn't own. I wouldn't own Pacific Brands. That's not that, again. That is not advice to go and sell it because I don't know what's going to happen to the share price. But what I do know is the value is nowhere near the share price today. Time, time is the friend of a great business, and it's the enemy of a bad business. Um, and so, if you've got a business with poor economics, then the longer you're in it, you know, ultimately it, it doesn't go well. Um, now, the share price. I note that the share price has done reasonably well uh, from and a low base you've pretty much bought, bought anything in February yeah. and you've done okay because yeah. the market's gone up um, and and there seems to be this this tendency in the market that oh, I've missed the good things well I'll go for something that hasn't caught up and you know and invariably that that sort of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy um, but it's not a great business there are plenty of better businesses out there Okay. Gentlemen, I'd like to take you to an email we've received from Ken in Victoria, who has recently purchased a substantial amount of guns shares at stock code GNS in anticipation, of course, of their latest project being approved by the federal government. Although he says basically from the day of purchase, they have declined in value. How do you see the long-term prospects of this stock? Let's take a look at the chart so we can all see just how guns has been faring. Um, has it been given the final tick of approval? No, in fact, I thought I read today that ACCC is going to going to move against right. against um, uh, its involvement with the Great Southern Plantations mm. um, uh, investors, uh, the, the the land. Um, th th what this? What the? Ex what was the person's name? It was a Ken, Ken from Ken. Victoria. Okay, what what Ken has done is is a, is I, what I would regard as a classic error um, in investing. You might get the theme right, you know, and there's lots of great themes out there that you can invest in, <laughs> but unless you know what the business is actually worth and you're paying a price that is a lot less than that value, then even if you get the theme right, you can still get a great asset but turn it into a bad investment. So you need a combination of two things. You want a good business with bright prospects, and that's your theme, but you also want to buy it at a discount to what it's worth. And if you don't, if you don't get the latter, then, then you're really risking losing money. Um, so, and I see it a lot. You know, I have to admit, I read the papers all the time and, and I watch the various programs and, and people say, you know, this, there's a great story behind this particular company. That's true. There might be a great story behind the company, but you need to buy it below what it's worth. Otherwise, you run the risk of losing money. And stories don't always have happy endings, as we all know.